I think we need to be mindful of why we're not patient to begin with. But then how do we practice it? How do we how do we how do we bring this to life? And as leaders, listen, if you've got a goal, it should be to make patience your superpower. You want patience to be something that you are known for. Uh, you know, I can't think of a very I can't think of any great leaders that were known as impatient. This is the Leadership Boundary Podcast. I'm one of your hosts this week, Brandon Smith, and joining me is my partner and co-host, Randy Hain. For our topic today, we're going to talk about something that is a bit counterintuitive from a workplace and business climate today. I almost, I, Randy, I almost feel dangerous just saying the word because I think people are going to say, yeah, I get it, but you know, I don't have any of that. Yeah. And I have no, no one's giving me any grace for that. Yeah. The word is patience. Oh, that's a great word. So we're going to talk about patience, the value of patience, why if we're patient in the right time and context, it can actually give us a better result mm -hmm. if we rush through. So I'm going to I'm going to give this a, as an analogy. I was in a, a, a meeting yesterday with some colleagues. We were talking about different issues with business. And, I, and this analogy hit me. Randy, you know me. I'm an analogy and story guy. Uh, my analogy was it feels like every if we use a cooking analogy, because I, I love cooking analogies for some reason. If we use a cooking analogy, most organizations today, if not all, everything has to go through the microwave. But some things, some things need to be in the crock pot. You know, you, if you were really trying to make that 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 really tender pork, pork roast, you're not gonna throw it in the microwave for five minutes. Mm -hmm. You want to kind of give it some hours or days, perhaps. And so there's something about patience in the right timing that can get us the right result. Mm -hmm. So Randy, when you think of patience, what does it mean to you and why is it so important today? I love this topic. Um, you know me, I, I always step back and say, well, why do we have a challenge with patience? And I, my, my thoughts went there first. So I'll just start with that. You know, I think we're, um, I think we're over indexing on technology. I think we're, I think we're all too a little wired sometimes. Uh, so I think we're always, we've got short attention spans. We're looking at screens. We're always, focused on lack, we're not really having good human interaction. We're just having a lot of interactions with our devices. So I think that creates some impatience. At least it does in my life. When I'm, when I'm on the, uh, if I'm on zoom calls all day and on my phone, I find that I've got less patience. So I think that's an issue. Um, I think the other thing is too, and you say it all the time is just lack of time. You know, I think we, we are always running from thing to thing and meeting to meeting uh, that it creates almost a feeling of impatience. So when I think about uh, when I think about being more patient with others, I think we need to be mindful of why we're not patient to begin with. But then how do we practice it? How do we how do we how do we bring this to life? And as leaders, listen, if you've got a goal, it should be to make patience your superpower. You want patience to be something that you are known for. Uh, you know, I can't think of a very, I can't think of any great leaders that were known as impatient. So you want to be known as patient. You need to practice it. One thing that I would lead with, and then I'll throw it back to you, is I find that when I can slow down and I can put myself into the shoes of the other person that maybe is creating impatience for me, like someone that is, you know, pushing my patience to the limit, someone uh, that is, you know, causing a problem that I'm not, I'm not enjoying. If I could just take a minute and live in their shoes for a minute and maybe understand why they're doing this, you know, I doubt that it's malicious. I think that there probably could be something going on. Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they don't understand fully the issue that I'm asking them to fix. Maybe I didn't develop them or teach them or train them or coach them appropriately as their leader. And that's why they're creating this impatience on my end. So it's interesting when we take a minute and live in those shoes and just say, wait a minute, why, why do I feel this way? And do I play a role in this person creating this impatience for me? That's kind of a, an introspective look in the mirror that can be very helpful. Or maybe we just realize that, you know what, they are having a bad day. Now that I think about it, they've got a, their husband has COVID, uh, their daughter, you know, just had an accident, whatever is going on. So they're just not having a good day and I need to be more patient with them. So sorry for the ramble, but I think the preamble of 
I think we're a little too wired at times, which makes us kind of get into that state of impatience. And I think we don't spend enough time putting ourselves in the shoes of others. And what's your take, Brandon? Yeah, Randy's what I like where you started to take this was uh, it, it's a I've heard leadership defined as it's self-awareness to self-management. There's mm -hmm. lots of definitions around leadership, but that's mm -hmm. one. Yes. And that's really what you're talking about here. You're talking about how do we use patience as a tool to manage our emotional state? <coughs> and so this technology and everything being urgent all the time, <coughs> that the emotional state or the emotion that is in the air, in the water that is surrounding us all the time is anxiety. Mm -hmm. And anxiety and urgency are really the same thing. And it can create this kind of this, this high energy vibrating thing. Why aren't they doing that? Why haven't I gotten this? Why are they? And, and so um, managing that. And so when someone is coming to you being pushy, rather than reacting emotionally, we're going to be patient. We're going to give them grace. We're going to kind of put ourselves in their shoes. Right. Yeah. Say, I'm not going to escalate this by responding, by matching their emotional state. I'm going to have patience. So I think I think I think we're seeing patients in two ways, Randy, from our conversation. One, it's how we react to other people's emotional states mm -hmm. and not letting that affect us, not match it. In human developmental psychology, there's a, a, a principle that we tend to match levels. Mm -hmm. We often see this in traffic, right? Somebody runs over, somebody passes you and cuts you off. You, you immediately, your first thought as a human being is, oh yeah, I'll show them, right? So patience is not letting, not getting sucked into that. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I want to offer for us to think about, which is almost harder, is being patient with work initiatives. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes things can't just be put in a microwave. Mm -hmm. Not how it works. Particularly when you're dealing with people change, for example. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a, a personal example. So when I wrote my first book in 2020, The Hot Sauce Principle, How to Live and Lead in a World Where Everything's Urgent All the Time, I wrote the book. And I, and I took the draft and I sent it to my editorial board, folks mm -hmm. that I trusted. And I, the feedback that I got was split 50-50. 50% of the people said, oh, Brandon, love your stories, more stories. 50% of the people said, Brandon, don't get rid of the stories, more bullet points. Just tell me what to do. I didn't know what to do with that feedback. Now, if I wasn't patient or if I had an editor pushing on me hard mm -hmm. to make a decision, I would have probably just picked a path and thrown out the other path and that's what I would have done. Hmm. But instead, I put it in the crock pot. I let it simmer for six months. Mm -hmm. And what Adam Grant says in his book, Originals, is he says, actually, when we procrastinate or we kind of don't address something and we just kind of let it, let it kind of kick, we're letting it kick around the back of our mind, it's actually being worked on mm -hmm. almost in a, on a, a behind the scenes kind of operating system. Mm -hmm. So I let it for six months. I just let it sit in the crock pot. And then one day, I got it. I knew what to do. Mm -hmm. The answer was run a story, a, a narrative all the way through every chapter. And then at the back of every chapter, front first half is the story that goes all the way through the book. And mm -hmm. then the back of every chapter, it's going to be the, the, the points. So I was able to be true to who I was, find a solution that, that honored the feedback I got. But I couldn't have done that if I was rushed to an answer. Mm -hmm. a, a microwave wouldn't have given me the solution. Yeah. So sometimes when we're working through kind of more creative challenges, strategic challenges, you don't want to rush those. You want to give mm -hmm. yourself time to really think that through. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another component to patience is using it as a strategic tool so we don't rush decisions. Because if you rush a decision and it's not the right one, now we're going to spend a lot of time in cleanup mode. Mm -hmm. We're going to actually create problems for ourselves. Yeah. So, so I, I would offer that as another one. We, we, we can see patients play out in two, kind of two places, how we respond to others that are maybe sure. pushing our emotional buttons, but also how we respond to bigger problems we're trying to solve that, that are complex and not mm -hmm. rushing through those. So, R Randy, anything you'd like to build on that? You know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to paraphrase and probably even misquote Teddy Roosevelt, but I think he said something to the effect, if I could, if I could kick the person in the rear end who is responsible for most of my mistakes, I wouldn't be able to sit down for a week. And, and I'm paraphrasing poorly, but, but in essence, he was saying, oftentimes we are 
to blame for a lot of the things that we are frustrated with. If we're willing to be self-reflective, look in the mirror, we can often find that we create our own problems. And I think patience is one of those things. Um, you know, I, I, I just believe that people are not going out of their way to make me impatient. I don't think they're maliciously doing it. So we've talked a lot in the past, and I wrote about this in my book, Essential Wisdom, uh, on clarity. Clarity is one of those words that's very powerful, and conceptually, it can activate a lot of other things. Well, clarity is one of those things that can really help with patience. You were talking about workplace initiatives and things at work. When we are impatient with someone that's maybe not delivering fast enough, they're not, um, they're not doing the kind of job that we would have done. Um, there's a whole host of things. I was talking to a coaching client this week. And it was interesting to hear her talk about her impatience and frustration with one of her one of her team members. And when I asked questions about, did you set clarity of expectations? Did they know exactly what you wanted? The answer I got was, well, no, I said I wanted it quickly and they should know that that means like by tomorrow. Well, no, not everybody knows that. So the more I unpacked it with her, the more we recognized that she had not given this team member role clarity, clarity of expectations. My, my client was not communicating very clearly. So she had a lot of the responsibility for the performance of the team member, which was creating her impatience. So that is just something that I really hope the listeners are, are taking in and absorbing right now. If you look in the mirror, you'll often find that we are to blame for a lot of the things that are creating our impatience. And Brandon, something you said I just absolutely love. Now, um, I don't have a lot of examples of six months uh, letting things just kind of sit in the crock pot, but I think the idea of sleeping on it is always a good idea. So when you're feeling emotionally charged, frustrated, <clears throat> you want to march in or send an angry email or, or whatever it is that you're feeling you want to do because of your impatience, have the self-discipline to sleep on it. I cannot tell you how many times I got to a much better place, a less emotionally charged place. When I just had a good night's sleep, I, always, I would always come back the next day with a different perspective, a different lens. So my two kind of you know add-ons to what you said is clarity can be the catalyst for patience. Look in the mirror and figure out, am I providing that to the people around me? And then I'm just reinforcing your point about sleeping on it, taking some time. Yeah, yeah. So so the, let's, let's build on this because this is a really important skill for all leaders to develop. Mm -hmm. And we think about the leaders we admire the most, the ones we would say are the most wise, they're patient, mm -hmm. but we'll be all charged up in a meeting and they'll, and they'll be sitting back calmly saying, you know, why don't we give it some time to think about it? They're, they recognize some things are crock pot activities mm -hmm. and that's necessary to get the best result. Some things are microwaves. So what I love, Randy, where you're taking us is we can, there are some things we can do while we still want to honor patients, mm -hmm. and honor the crock pot. There's some things we could do to accelerate that a little bit or enable that a, a little bit. Yeah. So naturally, sleeping on its one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna I I I'm, I'm gonna channel my inner Randy Hain here. Um, going for walks can be another. It can give us good reflection time. That's that's a crock pot exercise. It's not you rattling off an email and response. You're you're thinking about it. You're processing it. You're kind of letting it just kind of kick around in your head. Mm -hmm. You're giving it space for that. Mm -hmm. That can be very good. Uh, prayer time, reflection time, meditation time can be another one. That could be another way for us to to work on some things in that kind mm -hmm. of background operating system that you know where maybe the answer is not clear, or there's a lot of uh, possible um, approaches that, mm -hmm. that have yield different results. So those are those are others. Um, and frankly, even bringing in other people into the conversation, I think that's another part of patience is recognizing. As a mentor shared with me years ago, we all hold a piece of the truth. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes, if we're if we were thinking, I got to all be on me, uh, that's not necessarily true and fair. And I can't tell you how many times when I've been wrestling with something, and I'll bring it up in a conversation with somebody else, and all of a sudden, the path forward is clear. Mm -hmm. And folks, frankly, that's actually one of the many many benefits of things like therapy or coaching. Mm -hmm. You have someone else that you can 
You can share what's going on in your head, how you're thinking through problems. They can ask some questions of you, clarifying questions to Randy's point that can get you maybe seeing things differently or seeing things more clearly. Mm -hmm. But again, we need patience in order to recognize there might need to be a few more steps in this process mm -hmm. before we're ready to get to an outcome. Well, so, you know, what you're, what you're giving people, Brandon, and I, I love this, is you're giving people a checklist. You've begun a checklist. I'm feeling impatient. I want to work on this. I, as a leader, want to be better at this. That's exactly the right thinking. Let's finish the checklist. Let's add some more items to the checklist. Remember, if you're listening to this, we're operating under the assumption that you want to be more patient as a leader. That's kind of our assumption right now. And if you do, we've given you a few nuggets. Here are a few more. If you're, if you're feeling impatient with someone, you're in a conversation, whatever it is, work at feeling, work at being present. Don't be distracted. Don't have 50 things going on and try to deal with your patients as well. Try to focus on the person or the people in front of you. Be attentive. Be curious. Ask questions. You know, listen, listen to what you hear. You know, Brandon it, it made a great point. You know, you, you've got to learn what's going on and you won't know that unless you're asking questions. So be curious. Listen to what you're you're hearing. Actively listen. Don't just listen to respond. In previous shows, we've talked about ask, listen, invest. Listen, these are these are just core to good leadership. I think two other things that I would add, Brandon, is practice the golden rule. Um, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, we all want to be, we all want people to be patient with us. Um, and we need to practice patience toward others. You know, it's not fun to have someone feel impatient with you, right? We all know what that feels like. Let's be mindful that we don't want to do to others what we don't want done to us. And I think the last, uh, I'm reminded of our, uh, our good friend, Andreas Widmer, uh, one of our most popular podcasts from several months ago. And he introduced the concept of te voglio bene, I want your good. So when we're feeling that impatience welling up, we're feeling that, oh my gosh, why is this going on? We're feeling frustration, patience, whatever it is. Take a minute and think about, all right, rather than feel this way towards this person or these people, I want to think more about, I want what's best for them. And me being impatient is not what's best for them. That's not going to achieve anything. So Tavolio Benny, uh, along with these other things that we've talked about, can activate patience. And then I go back to what I said earlier, which I think is quite frankly, one of the most important things I know I practice. Just take a minute and put yourself in the shoes of the other person. Try to understand a little bit more about why they are there. And as I said, either you'll figure out, you know what, they've got things going on that are creating this, or maybe I created it because I didn't prepare them well for the thing that I asked them for. So that's, I think what I just did, and you may have a few other items, is I just helped us build a checklist for how to activate patients within us. And I hope that's what our listeners take away today. Yeah, so Randy, I've got one last patience challenge for us. It's where the stakes are even higher, if okay. not the highest. And we must be able to develop this skill and competency. I'm going to throw it out there to you. I'd love to get your thoughts. There's probably no better training ground and no more critical area in our life than as a spouse and parent mm -hmm. that we develop patience. And perhaps nothing will test us more mm -hmm. than those relationships. <clears throat> so as people are taking this notion of patience out of the workplace and they're pulling it into their home life, what are maybe some tips that you might have for us on how we can become better at being patient with those who we love? Well, we could have a whole show on this. Uh, I am going to... I'm going to misquote scripture, which is dangerous, but I think St. Paul said, love is patient, love is kind. And he starts with love. And this goes right back to what I just said about, you know, Andreas Widmer's uh, teaching of Tivolio Bene, sharing that with us. That is an act of love. I want your good. So when we think about our partners, our spouses, our children, of course we want what's best for them. And it's because we have that love for them, that desire for their good, that we will often 
bring ourselves down to a calmer place. It creates patience when I may be really angry with my son for breaking the window with the baseball, but ultimately he's still my son and I love him. Now we're going to have to figure out this baseball thing, but I'm not going to kick him out of the house. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do anything drastic. I'm just going to be frustrated and patient, but then ultimately I'm going to love him and we're going to get to a solution. Now, this is where I'm going to take what you said a little further. We've got to carry that mindset into the workplace. Well, wait a minute, Randy, you're, you're, you're mixing personal and professional. Yes, of course I am. Because the behavior that you show at home probably really well to those you love, your colleagues also deserve that same um, that same sort of act, that same sort of feeling from you. Now, I don't mean you have to go around telling your colleagues that you love them. You can if you want. But what I'd rather you do is act out of love. And when you act out of love, Tavolio Bene, I want your good, you're absolutely going to practice more patience because you're going to know that, you know what, they make mistakes. We're all human. Uh, I make mistakes. I'm human. So I think you make a great point. But I think our relationships, our parenting, grandparenting, whatever it is, is absolutely probably where we get the best opportunity to show patience. Let's take some of those lessons into the workplace. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. So I'll wrap it up by saying this. So I'll, I'll pull another quote, not scripture this time. It's going to be from the movie, The Incredibles. So you have, if you've seen that movie, Pixar movie, The Incredibles. I know you point, love that movie. I love that movie. So at one point, Mrs. Incredible turns to Mr. Incredible and she says, it's not about you. Yeah. And I think that sums it all up. Yeah. And that's what's so hard about patience because when we feel impatient, particularly at home, we're feeling like we're not getting heard. We're, we're not being appreciated. We're not being seen. We're not being honored. We want, we want those kids to do it our way. We want to do it exact, exactly the way we would do it. We want, we, 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 we're upset that they're, uh, made a mess that now we have to go clean up. Um, we're making it about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to our podcast the prior week on engagement, we talk about the importance of making it not about us, making it about the other person. See, mm -hmm. even that conversation around engagement has a level of patience to it. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. not going to make it about us. So that's also to add to Randy's checklist, a final comment would be, Notice when you just feel like you you have to insert your point of view. You have to insert what you think. You have to make sure they know what you want them to do. If it's feeling kind of almost like it's building and building and building like a teapot and then it just kind of explodes, that's us not honoring patients. Mm -hmm. And that can get in the way of relationships. My, my wife has been reading a book. I haven't picked it up yet, but it's really intriguing. And it's basically how do you have a relationship with your kids when they become adults? Mm -hmm. And I think this, the subtitle is something like, I'm going to butcher this. It's something like keeping the, um, the welcome mat um, kind of out and, and um, your mouth shut. Something I have like that, that book. I have that book. Yeah. And, it, <laughs> and the idea is, again, it's not about you. And that's the bridge for us both at work and at home. Mm -hmm. And so notice when you're feeling like, I want to say my point of view. I want to get my point across. That is potentially uh, going to get in the way. Mm -hmm. Now, not for our conversation today. There, there's probably a time and place where, you know, we've exhausted our patients and we might need to apply a different skill. But I think we want to make sure we've done that first. We've we've used this muscle as much as we can mm -hmm. in order to really do things in a way that are kind, compassionate, and, and create that space for the right thing to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to use that before we use other, other means. So we want to go to our patient's muscle first Yes. Uh, because it's going to yield better results. So, Randy, any, any final thoughts before we close out our conversation today? Yeah, this is probably the most tactical thing that I've said today. Um, and it's, a, it's an exercise that I take my clients through. If you're really wanting to get better at patience, I would encourage you to look at your calendar yesterday and think about all of your people interactions and really think about where did I show impatience? Where was I frustrated? Just, just think about the conversations. Maybe take a few mental notes, write a few things down and really think about how you could have done things differently, maybe using the checklist we shared today. But then start shifting away from the retrospective to start thinking about, let me look at my calendar today. Where do I have meetings where 
I know the project's off track. I know I'm meeting with Billy and I'm really frustrated with Billy and he's going to make me impatient. And think about how do you go through some mental gymnastics to show up a little differently? How do I prepare to not let myself be impatient? So very tactical. Look at the calendar yesterday. Examine how you showed up. Think about how you'll prepare for the day ahead of you. That is a really fundamentally core way that you can change any behavior, but certainly for patients. Yeah. And so underneath what Randy just said was intentionality. Yeah. Just creating that little space to create your intention for the day and mm -hmm. have the intention of being patient today. Yes. With everyone in my life. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I, I always enjoy these conversations with my friend and partner. He always makes me think differently and it, it just creates a, a nice way to take a concept like patience and turn it into something that we can actually activate and get better at so we can become better humans. So with all of our podcasts, the goal is for you to take away something from today. What was something from our conversation today? Maybe it was the intention of being patient and looking at your calendar. Maybe it's how you can apply it in your personal life at home with your loved ones, or maybe how you can apply it more directly in your one-on-ones or that colleague that irritates you. Or maybe it's how you can use patience on a messy, complicated problem that you don't want to throw in a microwave because it's going to burn it up. You want to keep it in the crock pot for a little while. And regardless, the goal for you is take one thing from today you can put in place starting today to help you and your team and heck, even your family thrive tomorrow.